Man, Apple and Epic, this is great. So digital content next. Uh, so a trade organization representing Washington Post, New York Times, dozens of others, ask Apple to change the 30% cut. So this is an article over on CNET. Apple filed a declaration basically saying the whole thing is Epic's fault. They could have just stayed in line. Lol. And Apple reveals emails showing Tim Sweeney asking Tim Cook for special treatment, kind of like the 15% cut that Apple takes from Prime Video before this all went down, adding evidence to the claim that Epic had planned all of this ahead of time. To... Oh, that's not even a claim. That's like, I mean, you saw that 1984. No way there's an alternative. You saw yeah, that 1984 there's... spoof. Well, you also saw the like, what was it, 63 page legal document or something that they filed yeah. like hours afterwards? Like, yeah. there's, there's, it's, it's, it would be quite an impressive feat if this wasn't planned ahead of time. So, I'm not a fan of everything that Epic yeah. Games and by extension, Tim Sweeney, or maybe Tim Sweeney and by extension, Epic Games, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm not a big fan of everything they do. This appears to be a legitimate pro-consumer move. I don't know why. I don't know why. I'm not I'm not going to I'm not it's going to guess at their motivation. Uh, it's definitely Hold on, hold on. Do you want to make an apology video, Luke? Because that's no, how I, you make I'm an not, apology video. I'm not saying it's not going to help other people or I'm not saying it or at least could help other people. Yeah. Um I know they're positioning it as that. They clearly have their own desires and goals from this situation um but it's unclear exactly what they are so on the one hand they definitely want to pay less in platform processing fees to apple and Google. seems like seems like they would really like to have their own store that seems to be quite a big focus they would really like to have a like play store equivalent that is the epic game store um that that seems to be something that they've they've put quite a bit of pressure and quite a bit of focus mm -hmm. on um, I think that's the biggest one, to be honest. Um, I I think if Apple was like, okay, but we're gonna we're gonna keep our thirty percent fee, but you can have your own independent store on iPhones. I think they would be super happy and would close everything down. No way. I don't think they'd I'm, take that. Okay, I wait. So. Do you think that's why Epic's going so much harder after Apple compared to Google? Like even just the wording, because obviously they got like they got dropped from both the App Store and the Play Store. Like to be clear, they are they are at odds with both Apple and Google right now, and yet they chose Apple's iconic 1984 commercial to parody. They call out Apple specifically in the blurb after it. I'm trying to remember exactly what they said. 1984 uh, parody. It, it feels um, like to me. It feels like to me that they didn't necessarily anticipate the Google response as much as they anticipated the Apple response. Um, but like they could have easily changed this wording. So in their 1984 parody, they've got here. I'll just throw a display capture up here. Epic Games has defied the App Store monopoly. In retaliation, Apple is blocking Fortnite from a billion devices. Join the fight to stop 2020 from becoming 1984. Why not at least mention Google? Right, because yeah. and and here's here's my here's my guess based on what you just said. Then is because Google does actually allow alternate app stores. Yeah, there was some issues there though. I I don't I'm not super on top of all the details here, and I want to bring up one really quick thing. Yeah, someone in Twitch chat, Irish guy sixty uh, seven, said that according to Lewis Rossman, uh, Apple. Will require all customer personal information, name, address, etc., to be collected and passed to Apple alongside the parts order. Yep. Um, his example of an issue here is if you bought a secondhand Mac on Craigslist and needed a repair, then Apple would uh, obtain all of your info, even though you're not the original buyer. Right. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Something to uh, just add on top of that. Sorry, what are you going to say? So I just want to get back to like what is like what is the point of taking on Apple here. Like obviously if they mm. can get their if they can get their oh, right. app store um you know uh commission cut, then that would be better than nothing. But it seems like if I was if I was Tim Sweeney, 
uh, and I actually haven't read the original email where he asked Tim Cook for special treatment. We also don't know anything about any conversations that might have taken place over the phone or in person about this. And we're talking, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars on the line here, right? Like by the time Apple's taking 30% of Fortnite revenue on iOS, uh, there's a lot of microtransactions there, ladies and gentlemen. Wasn't Fortnite a billion dollar business for Epic in one year? I, I I can't I can't remember the exact number, but let's yeah. say maybe not hundreds. Let's say tens of millions of dollars. It's worth having. It's worth having dinner, basically. So we don't know what's been said, but I have to assume that at some point Epic could have gone to Apple and said, "Okay, well here's the how how many pages was the document? Three hundred something." Uh I think 60 something 60 whatever here's the legal document we put together this is going to start an absolute storm uh not just with us but with every developer you work with who is tired of giving you 30 percent of the top line revenue associated with their app um you should just give us a discount and we can make this all go away if I, I have to assume that that conversation never took place because if I'm Tim Cook why wouldn't I just take that deal maybe because Tim Cook and maybe Apple and maybe Tim yet. Cook just doesn't actually respect gaming or like think that it matters. We've definitely seen that attitude from them over yeah. the decades. Apple has not had enough respect for gaming. They treat it like like it's just like a casual thing you do on the toilet. They really do. Um, so maybe part of it is that like, sorry, what Epic Games, excuse me. Uh, Apple's also an exceedingly arrogant company. Uh, and, you know, whether it's their policies towards not helping their consumers because whatever you're going to do, take your business elsewhere, um, or whether it's their, uh, the, wow, decade-long hiatus they've been on for dealing with NVIDIA after that meltdown of uh, GeForce chips and MacBooks way 100 years ago, um, they, they have shown that they are not willing to forgive and forget. So, you know, maybe, maybe that's exactly what happened. Maybe... Maybe Tim Sweeney put a gun to Tim Cook's head, and I, mean, I don't have to say Tim every time, I guess. Maybe Sweeney put a gun to Cook's head, and, uh, you know, the, the Cookster, the Cookster didn't like it. And, uh, you know, he went, he went cookie on his, on his ass, or whatever. Like, I don't know. I don't know how it went down. The point is, this just seems so unnecessary. And so it, yeah. just, it makes me question Epic's motives, especially the fact that they are so laser focused on Apple and all of this. Google takes the same 30% cut. Yep. I, I think, um, and Google, Google specifically takes it from gaming, to be clear. Um, cause that, that was something I was, I was interested in cause I was like, they don't seem to have an issue with us. Uh, but yeah, it's gaming stuff specifically. Um, the for, Fortnite specifically was not on the Play Store originally, and find, finding news about this is like kind of difficult now because yeah, they got search that engines solved. are like you mean the current one, right? I'm like, no, I mean last time. So yeah. they weren't on the Play Store originally; they were in their own situation, and Google pushed them to come onto the Play Store mostly because there was like tons of issues with malware and stuff. Right. I don't remember how that exactly worked. I don't know if it was like fake. Fortnite download links or something that was happening. I'm not certain, but there was a lot of issues that users were having yep. with it not being on the Play Store. Um, and Epic kind of fought for a while, but eventually agreed to put it on the Play Store. Now they've been kicked back off. Um, but they they have statements um, in, in their like counter to Apple that specifically talks about uh, wanting to be able to have their own store. Someone right. in Twitch chat said like, um, you're dumb, blah, blah, blah. There would only be three games. I think they want to be like the gaming store for mobile phones. Um, right. they're, they're pushing the Epic store for desktop. Uh, it has more games on it than just games made by Epic. Or using um, Unreal I, Engine. Or, or using Unreal Engine. Yep. Absolutely. It's, it's wider than that. Um, and I think that's what they're trying to do with mobile. So you and think... I think they're trying to push in legally. Okay, so here we go. It's starting to materialize. So Epic is after, what did they take, a 12% cut on Epic Game Store? Something like that, I think, yeah. it's, I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to 15%. Can't remember. I, I want to say that 12. That often comes with exclusivity clauses, though. So here we go. 
Maybe this is the plan. Maybe Epic wants to be an alternative, like gaming centric store, and they see the 30% that Apple and Google take as a, a, an impossible burden to bear for game developers. Whereas if Apple and Google were willing to take just, well, 10%, then Epic could also take 10% or 12% and they'd still be under what people were paying before and they can position themselves as like uh, a, a pro developers, pro consumer uh, platform while taking, you know, 10% of all gaming revenue effectively on mobile. Well, is, that, can... is that the end game here? Yeah. Uh, the one thing I would add is I'm pretty sure Steam also takes 30%. Yes, they do. Uh, so the, the platform cut has been like kind of 30% across the board, yeah. which is nuts. So um, Epic is I going, I can be a disruptor, still yes. make bucket loads and bucket loads of money on other people's work. Um, why not? Yeah. All I got to do is go to war with Apple. Yeah. Uh, Cliffy in YouTube chat um, posts, Fortnite is a billion dollar business. Why would you care about 30% cut? Because 30% of a billion dollars is $300 million. <laughs> It must be nice to be as rich as Cliffy, where you don't care about three hundred million dollars. Yeah, really. Wow. Wow, Cliffy, that'd be, that'd what a neat. what a baller, what a freaking baller. All right. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's that's a great that's a great statement. Uh, for for A L S E, which I think is uh, pronounced false, false. Uh, which is a great username for you, by the way, says YouTube takes 45%. YouTubers make millions. Um, I'm not aware. Uh, actually, I think YouTube does take 45% of AdSense, but I, they take less of things like Super Chats. As for YouTubers making millions, yes, some do. Most don't. That's kind of like saying lottery ticket purchasers make millions. Yeah. Some of There's them also do. a bit more like infrastructure difficulty involved in what YouTube's doing. Yes, I have a ton of respect, especially having started up a video streaming platform. <laughs> I mean, I have so much respect for what Google does with YouTube. Honestly, I I complain. It's kind of insane. I actually. complain about it, but YouTube has changed video. I was going to say online video, but I ch I checked myself because they have changed video and it was not easy and it continues to be not easy uh mad 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 respect for google and and youtube and what they do and i pay my however many double digits of percentage gladly because they do so much more for me than the app store does for an app developer quite frankly they provide yeah, a platform I... like apple does they process payment like apple does but they also bring an audience to you, which Apple does, but also its discoverability is not great. Discoverability is also purchasable on that platform. You can yeah. buy ad space. You can purchase you can it on YouTube too, if you really want to. I mean, oh. but you can't, you can't buy, uh, sort of, not, not in the same way. Like you, I don't, as far as I know, you can't have, you can't buy the search term for Linus Tech Tips. Like, like if someone typed in Linus Tech mm, Tips, I see what you mean. I don't think Kyle could make it so that Bitwit shows up over top of yours through a promotion thing. If he I could, don't think if so. he could, that would do it. <laughs> He'd go for gold. Someone also pointed out that the Twitch cut is 50 50, and it's like, yeah, but this is, we're in the same situation. Yeah, and live like, is so hard. Live is so difficult, yep. so expensive. Yep. And the vast majority of the people on the platform aren't paying for it. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. Actually, you know what? That's the biggest thing I forgot. I'm sorry, Luke. I totally screwed up that bit about why YouTube is so amazing and why they're so good to YouTubers. Because, yeah, I'm giving them 45% of my AdSense or whatever. That's because somebody... That's like nothing. It's like, it's, like, uh, it's like video distribution socialism, effectively. Because somebody has to pay for that person who uploads a bunch of unlisted videos just to share with their family that nobody ever views and nobody ever sees an ad on, but that is definitely taking up bandwidth and taking up storage space on Google servers somewhere. Yeah, they're mining it for data, but let's not pretend that the margins on that are good enough to justify the amount of video they store. There's even stuff that, that isn't even really like that too. Like like Bill Wirtz, um, yeah. Probably most of the people in the audience, the vast majority of the people in the audience have probably heard of this, even if you don't recognize the name. He did the like history of Japan and history of the world videos. 
Do you know what I'm talking about? I actually don't. I don't watch a lot of YouTube. Wow. Okay. Well, uh, history, it. history of the entire world, comma, I guess, has 97 million views. Okay. And history of Japan has 59 million views. No ads. Somebody has to subsidize that. That's me. And I'm okay like with that. That's over 150 million views. One of the videos is 20 minutes long. The other video is nine minutes long. Sure, this is like crazy cash all around the whole freaking world, but there's no ads. Yep. That has to get paid for. That's that's money, dude. Some You, you know what would be kind of interesting for next uh, WAN show? Do you want to run the numbers? Like how much that video costs to serve to 96 million people? I'm, well, I, I'm there's, curious. There's no, way, there's no way for us to know because of the amount of extensive caching that they have all around the world. Sure. Like we don't know what their infrastructure is but like. But let's just do it in a basic way, right? Because th that's like, okay. So like if you didn't have the yeah. super powerhouse yeah. that is. So because... if you tried to do this on your own. Yeah. So if Bill Wirtz yeah. tried to, if Bill Wirtz has BillWirtz.com. Yeah. Because that's so if like. Bill Wirtz tried to do BillWirtz.com where you can watch videos. So if he tried to deliver it through this website, what would it cost him in order to have like good availability across the globe? Yeah. Because that's um, that's what YouTube does. It's the democratization yeah. of video distribution. Like it's it's actually incredible. And so yeah, Google doesn't have to pay for every byte that gets transferred over the series of tubes or whatever because they've got, you know, cash point, caching points or whatever the case may be. But Remember, they had to build that out, and there was an engineering cost associated with developing that yeah. technology, you know, uh, 15 years ago, uh, when it was not as easy as it is to do now even. So, yeah, I, I, would, I would love to know. I'd be super curious about, like, what that costs. Like, how much, how many LTT videos at 45% of the ad revenue YouTube has to serve in order to pay for all the people that watch that, right? Like... It's awesome. It's awesome. I love YouTube. I also get real mad at them sometimes, but I genuinely do love YouTube and, and what they've done as a whole. They make mistakes, 100%. Like Luke and I joke sometimes that YouTube is Floatplane's best possible PR department <laughs> because they just they just constantly like screw up. But um, you know, other than that, I, I love them dearly. Uh, well, if, if for that even, I love them too. <laughs> 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 it's like, well, well, sure, why Fair. not? Fair.